Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So as you can see in my background, that means that I've been uh, I'm back to Hong Kong from Toronto, Canada. So today in this video, I'll be sharing what I saw uh, in well, while I was in Toronto about the housing market and what's in common in other cities all around the world about the housing market. So first of all, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now and also like my Facebook page. And the most direct way to show me support is like and share this video to your friends or relatives or whatever you care uh, whoever you care about because the housing market is really an important topic because if you make a mistake it, it will be a 10 year or 5 year mistake that is pretty pretty much devastating okay so to begin with I went to uh, Toronto Canada and uh, I've been looking for a house and I'm about to do a pre-approval uh, mortgage and I'll buy a house again in Canada. So if that's the case, I'll be going back to Canada uh, within a few weeks and close the house. If the pre-approval is too straight and too troublesome, I may not do anything. I'll do more investment, probably investment in uh, maybe Hong Kong, Singapore or Malaysia. Who knows? Okay. So why would I be too, so optimistic about the housing market about uh, for the world? Because in general, I've talked about the bubble is there, but the bubble is not yes is yet to be burst. It's not now because the bubble. In order for a bubble to burst, is really really a coincidence for all the signals aligning to burst at the same time. It's because a recession is about every single one of us cannot pay the debts and cannot uh, pay the interest. That is about the bubble. All right, so. To say that it's a recession, that easily will uh, maybe miss, make you miss a chance to do any investment, including the housing market. As uh, previously, I made a video about the Toronto housing market because of the uh, new policies come, uh, came out in uh, April, and then the Canada just raised interest rate before I left Hong Kong to Canada, which is in July. And then uh, the home capital uh, crisis, then uh, the turnover, the volume is really dropped by 90%, but the price isn't going that low because it's, uh, it's happened in Vancouver before, it's happened in Hong Kong before. When there's uh, the bubble, it's not going to burst. When the demand is overriding, it's more than the supply, the housing prices will go up eventually. Whenever the price comes down, anyone get, who got married a few years ago but missed the chance buying a house or anyone who got married now or need a house now they will buy a house now or anyone doing investment they will buy a house now whenever the price is low so when i see that uh people uh, the difference is uh, the bidding the offers are kind of cooling down so the offers are getting more and more rational but what i see that is the general market of my friends every single one is still very optimistic about the housing market just like oh for example in vancouver in hong kong they're doing the same thing so we can't be too pessimistic right so if you have a chance you can buy a house that is something that uh caught me off guard a little bit because i thought that uh, some of the news like that people will be losing confidence so that i can take advantage of the price coming down and i can do a better investment by uh, buying a cheaper house and I can uh, uh, gain profit. That's exactly what I did in Hong Kong back in 2014 and 2015. I bought a uh, parking uh, parking space. If you don't know, a parking lot that you can park your car, just a slot, okay? Worth about, you can say about thir three, 300,000 US dollars. But uh, that's about the supply and demand because now I'm gaining about 20% uh, or 25% growth in just two years. So that I couldn't take any advantage of that. So there are two strategies that you can do. Mainly, uh, it would be the same in Vancouver, Seattle, LA, or Sydney, Melbourne. It's exactly the same. Two approach. One is going after the price. One is going after the rental uh, rental fee that can cover your mortgage. Okay, there are two completely approach. So people say that oh, if I'm doing an investment and you can do it for a longer term, I would buy a condo and an apartment. That's wrong. If you are going after long term and the price, you go buy a house, detached house, legit, literally detached house with backyard, anything for a family. Okay, so. Uh, the approach is that uh, the 
uh, the, 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 the yield, the rental yield should be really low. I, I, I believe that because in Toronto, in Vancouver, in Hong Kong, it's more like 1.5 to 2.5 max. Then uh, that's basically cannot cover your mortgage. If you have only 20% or 30% down payment, depends on if you're residents in that country or depends on the policies in that country. For example, even if you're residents in Hong Kong, you cannot get, uh, you cannot buy a house with only 20% down payment. You should at least have 40 to 50% down payment. That's pretty much showing that the Hong Kong housing market is really, really crazy. Okay, so the uh, Toronto policy is that whenever you have been really protective of the people renting houses okay so whenever you have to uh, uh, when the contract is expired whenever you have to uh, adjust the house uh, the rental fees it can be only adjusted upward according maximum according to the inflation rate so that means that if you are going after rental fee to cover your mortgage that is a bad plan so anywhere around the uh, 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 in other countries even though they don't have the policies same as in Toronto, even though uh, because the rental yield is so low, you cannot really cover the mortgage, right? So you really have to pay like a thousand or two thousand uh, more for the mortgages, like Canadian dollars to, uh, and Australian dollars more to really save up your money for the uh, future price to go up. Let's say a one million dollar house, uh, for it to go up by 10%, it really already covered up your thousand or two thousand dollars per month uh, for the mortgages. So that is the key. And the second key is location, because uh, if you say it might myself, my product is not really about the uh, the good schools, good high school. It's about yourself, myself, how I study. Uh, how I really study in high school. Uh, for example, my uh, my my year pretty much uh, I went to a high school that is ranked uh, by went uh, 36, 35, but uh, my year was ranked number three in uh, in the uh, in the area. So what I did is just study, right? But you have to understand that if the housing market is supported by the capital from mainland China, they really, really look after, uh, uh, look, uh, look, look, looking after famous, famous high schools. Okay, even though those high schools ranked a lot higher only because the Chinese went in, right? That's really funny. So those areas mainly are uh, where Chinese live in. So they have high ranking, high ranked high schools and even. Uh, junior high school stuff like that so that area is really really good to uh, rent out and the liquidity is really high so that is not a really good story in terms of uh, the original citizen living in that area right but in terms of uh, math and business wise and investment wise you really have to look after these reasons okay the second approach is to really uh, go after the condos and apartment but trust me even though uh, we, we can see the condos and apartment prices not only Toronto and also Vancouver and Sydney going outperforming the general market is only because of the supply and demand people just sold their house or people just got married and the house is always like that they always people always think the house housing prices is too high so every time they people get married not every time every time because you only get married once right i assume okay but people uh, whenever people get married they always think that the housing price is too high they always don't buy a house now and then the housing prices really go up then now they have to chase back and they kick into the market then they cannot afford a house they can only afford condos and apartments right so their rental yields are pretty high uh, uh, but you have to be careful of the management fees and it's pretty high pretty insane but if you look after for example in toronto you can look after in Rob york or even uh, downtown because you know people going to downtown is a crazy pain in the butt work if you go to downtown or work even you take train go train but um that it yields uh, maybe three to three point five yield after all the expenses paid and then you can probably cover your mortgages but the prices will super uh, underperform underperform the general indices trust me on that if you don't trust me trust the market you can look at the uh the indices and the historic record so that is mainly two approaches you can make your investment 
in uh, Toronto, Vancouver, Sydney, and Melbourne, uh, Seattle, main cities. It's exactly the same. Okay, it's exactly the same. So, should we invest a house for uh, myself to live? Yes. It, housing market is different than investing in forex or stocks. Whenever you have the ability, you can pay your mortgage. You have the calculation and math done in your head. You can go ahead and make an investment. When the times are uh, uh, not as good, you can slow down your investment or even sell a little bit. But when the time is good, you can always, uh, if you have the financially, you are all right, you can just do an investment. That is exactly what I did. That is exactly what my partner did. And uh, uh, he actually studied in uh, Toronto, older than me, and uh, he exactly doing the same thing. Now he has over 500 properties around the world. Uh, I can show you my, some of our clips looking, uh, uh, checking all the houses in Toronto, and he just bought two. Okay, every time he has had his math done, he will buy a house. So I understand you will leave all the negative comments about oh because you guys guys like you holding up all the supplies stuff like that so I can buy, I cannot buy a house. Uh, people like people from Chinese or from the China, so that's why I cannot buy a house. I I I uh you can say so, but uh, supposedly we're doing what we can to protect ourselves because the middle tier is what the government cannot protect. We cannot dream of the government to protect ourselves. We can only dream of ourselves to protect ourselves, okay? So the key is to be proactive, to do something as early as possible. That is exactly why I share the videos to you guys, even though English is not my first language. So hopefully you can uh, be inspired by whatever you have heard about, and also, hopefully, if you have any investment in your mind or any questions in mind, please leave me comments in the comment box below. Please show me some love. And also, it, that's the energy and the motivation for me to make more of the videos later. Investment made easy. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.